Well, you know, when two countries go to war, that's one of the first things they do is they try to block trade and not allow goods and services to go in. So if you do that initially and you block in, uh, you know, trade with a country, it is. What would the United States do if all of a sudden somebody from overseas came and said we can't import oil or something? We would consider that a pretty serious matter. It's not quite like a bomb dropping yet, but it is a, it is a symbol of a war going on when trade is blocked. So I don't like, I don't like sanctions. I want to follow the precepts of trade. And right now we're trading a whole lot. The West is trading a whole lot with Russia. We should emphasize that rather than us putting on sanctions. So I'm, uh, I'm opposed to virtually all sanctions unless there's a declared war. I, I, I've argued that case for a long time. So you would just leave Ukraine to sort of sort it out between themselves and, and the Russians? Whatever happens, happens. Well, well, certainly United States. I speak uh, uh, more from the perspective of the United States taxpayers, and it doesn't serve our interests. We've already spent $5 billion over the last 10 years trying to pick and choose the leadership of Ukraine. And then we participated in the overthrow of the uh, Yanukovych government, and this is when this recent stuff really stirred up. But we've been involved too much, and I take a non-interventionist foreign policy position. It's not our business. It doesn't serve anybody's interests. It's part of the same thing that led us into the disaster in the Middle East. A lot of people die, a lot of money is spent, and we're still suffering the consequences of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. And there's the threat of the war in Syria. We don't need another threat. The American taxpayers don't want it. And they, our government thinks they can get away with, well, I know the people don't want a war yet, but we're going to play games and we're going to threaten Russia and we're going to put on sanctions. And they fail to recognize that we have $500 billion of investments in Russia. Russia has $450 billion invested in the West. And all we're doing is trying to stir up more trouble. It makes no sense whatsoever. So, so it makes a lot of sense for us to mind our own business and let somebody over there solve their own problem. So this must make for some interesting family arguments because you're son, Senator Rand Paul, who of course front runner for the Republican nomination, uh, firmly believes in sanctions, has written uh, firmly saying if he was president he would not let Putin get away with it. So he's wrong. Well I don't think he's ever spoken clearly, you'll have to ask him to speak for himself, but uh, I know what I believe in and I know that uh, Rand is very much in favor of uh, free trade, free trade, so uh, that's, a, that's a different subject. I, I do not believe what you just said endorsed his statement that he's for full sanctions on, on Russia. I think you stretched that a little bit. Well, I mean, he wrote an op-ed in Time magazine in which he clearly said right at the end um, that uh, if I were president, he said, I would not let Vladimir Putin get away with it. And in that article, he argued that there must be action against Russia and there must be economic sanctions. I mean, it's, it's obviously you support your son for the presidential nomination, but the logic of your position is that you think he'd, he'd be a bad president for America. Well, hard, hardly can you translate that into that. So, no, uh, you'll have to clarify where he stands exactly by talking to him. I know where I stand, and I'll talk about where I stand on free trade and uh, non-interventionist foreign policy minding our own business and not uh, joining in the overthrow of uh, the uh, Ukraine government like we did and the money we, we spent and antagonizing uh, Russia. That is what I'm talking about. Where he stands on it, all those issues, you can talk to him. I'm not going to speak for him, but I do know that there's a lot of American citizens who join with me in saying we haven't had enough of this. That's We've had enough of this intervention. We've had enough of this wars, and we have enough of this debt, and the American people are getting sick and tired of it, let that, me tell you. That's the crux of this, isn't it, as to, as to, as to what extent the American people support your view of stepping back from the world. I mean, what, you know, what kind of America do they see that doesn't get involved in all of these international crises? Well, well, I think that's a misconstruction of what I'm saying. I want more involvement. I want trade. 
I, I don't want to step back. I think the isolationists now are isolating Russia. I don't want to isolate Russia. I want to continue the trade. I love it that the fact that uh, Europeans buy gas and oil from them, that means they're less likely to fight with them. Okay. I don't want to isolate myself. I want to trade with Cuba. I want to trade. I want to go to Cuba. So to, to say that for some reason we're stepping back, we're, we're, we're having a more sensible policy of getting along with people we, and traveling more and going with people and being friends with people, it has nothing to do okay. with stepping back. We, we a, must leave I'd it like there. to move our weaponry back. That's what I would like. All right. Well, Dr. Paul, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We'll, we'll take up those issues another time. Thanks a lot.